In today's video, we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop to create this selective color effect, where basically you've got a image that's in grayscale, and you just bring back splashes of color throughout the image. So this is one example. This is the one I'm going to be making with you today. Another example that I created earlier was this pile of fruit. It was in full color, and instead I just kept the lemons in full color and threw the rest into grayscale. Okay, so what I need you to do today to get started on this tutorial is open up one of the five sample files. You've either got the flowers, the fruit, hot air balloon, the pencils, or the umbrella. If you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing, I'm using the pencils, but you can do this for any one of those five photos. So open up the one you want in Photoshop. Okay, and from here, what I want you to do is pop over to your Layers panel on the right-hand side, unlock that layer, and then double click on its name, layer 0, and rename it to color layer. Okay, and then we're going to duplicate this layer. So you can press Ctrl J for the shortcut, or just right click and go to duplicate layer. And we're going to call this one grayscale layer. Alright, so we've got a color layer for this picture, and then on top of that, we're going to have a grayscale layer, which, layer, which means we're going to turn this into black and white. And the way we do that is we select this grayscale layer and we go up to our adjustments panel and we click on hue and saturation. That's the first option in the second line there. The hue and saturation adjustment box looks like this. What you need to do is press the little square down the bottom with the arrow coming out the side of it. That means we're just applying this hue and saturation effect to the layer below it. So that's the grayscale layer. And all we want to do is just pull the saturation lever all the way to the left. And that just sucks the color out of the photo. You can close that panel when you're done. Okay, and we're now ready to make our color splash effect work. Okay, there's a couple of ways you can do this. I'll show you one way first. It's a little bit messy though, and then I'll show you the better way to do it. So what we need to do now is click back on the grayscale layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to rub out sections of this layer and reveal what's beneath it, which is the colorful layer. So we need to grab our eraser tool, play with the size of your brush to make it bit smaller and simply go over the top of one of the leads on the pencil. Okay, so very carefully rubbing out just the lead on the pencil. And that reveals, well, it rubs out the grayscale part and reveals the color layer below it. The issue with doing this is it's untidy. If you zoom right in, you can see I've completely missed the lead around here and down there. So it doesn't look very neat. So I'm going to undo that, so it goes back to grayscale, and I'm going to show you the neater way to do this. So with your grayscale layer selected, just hit the little eye to the left of it and make it disappear. So we just turn its visibility off, okay, and just click on the color layer. What we're going to do is we're going to use the quick selection tool here to quickly select all the colors on the tip of the pencils. Then we're just going to rub them out. Okay, so let's go around and select the colors on the ends of the pencil using this quick selection tool. Making sure the little plus icon at the top is selected, so it will be making a selection. Use your right square brackets next to the letter P to control the size of your brush. You shouldn't have to click and drag too much here because these colors are fairly bright and vibrant. Okay, the darker colors underneath we might have a little bit of an issue with when it comes to selecting them. Let's see what happens here. You can see with the black it's selected too much through here. So you need to zoom in. Make your brush a little bit smaller if need be. Grab the minus brush from up here, so it deselects this part just here. Grab your plus brush back, and if you want, just tidy up the edges. Now we're going to go across. We need to get these few leads over here. We might have a few issues with these ones too. Looks like we are. So remember to grab your minus brush and just deselect the parts you don't want coloured in. and separate the two leads if possible. You can see with the purple it just selected a little bit too much there so we'll have to use our brush to come through here and separate the pink and the purple. Nearly done now, we'll get this orange, hopefully that works. No, again too much. So deselect using the minus brush the bits you don't want coloured. And this last colour here, it's going to be a tricky one to get because it blends in so well with the background. 
So I'm going to use the minus brush to deselect some of those parts. Okay, so we're nearly done. Just be careful as you go through here. That looks pretty good. So I think we may have selected all the colored tips pretty well. So what we're going to do now is go back to this grayscale layer. The selection still remains. And we're going to make it visible again. Okay, so we've got our gray back on top. And we've made our selection. All we need to do now is grab our eraser tool and start rubbing out. And because we made a selection, if I try and rub out down here on the pencil, nothing rubs out. It's only going to rub out what's inside those marching ants. Okay, this is a much neater way to do this little trick. Okay, because it helps you stay inside the lines and makes your rubbing out nice and neat. Okay, so you can have a huge brush if you wanted to. Just run it straight over the top of all those colors. When you're done, press Control D on your keyboard to deselect. And you've now got that effect made and working. Okay, so you can go to File and Save As and save that up into your account as Selective Color. And just quality 8, 9 or 10 will probably be best for that little box that appears. And that's how you do that. Okay, if you want to have a go at doing a second image, that would be great. Okay, so you should be doing at least the pencils and then choosing one image of your own and try and do that yourself as well. All right, when you're done, make sure you save it as a JPEG and I'll see you in the next video.